All right, we're back with Sophie. Nosy. Oh, yeah, yeah. We are in the office of the janitor to find a screwdriver. Man. <laughs> All right, it's been a week, so, you know, always. Oh, my God. That clock. I think that's very 50s, 60s, maybe even 70s, right? That clock survived a few decades on the stylus. Kind of wish I worked here when Raymond was in charge. Sounds like the hotel was very different back then. Um, the Clarington Hotel changes hands. Raymond Leduc retired yesterday after more than 20 years at the helm of the Clarington Hotel located in downtown Montreal. Founded by Leduc's father, Fernand, Fernand, in 1921, the hotel was one of Montreal's most respected establishments until the Great Depression and Fernand Leduc's death in 1929. Ever since, guests have noticed a drop in the hotel's standards. My wife and I used to stay at the Clarington every year for our anniversary, said Mr. Grayson, who first visited the hotel in 1925. We stopped coming two or three years ago because of all the unsavory characters hanging around. My wife was quite afraid. Wait... Is it maybe racism? <laughs> that, would, that would be my unsavory immediately for these kind of people means that like it's not straight white people, you know, who are rich. Despite Raymond Leduc's retirement, the establishment will remain in the Leduc family as his brother Bernard is now taking over the reins after many years as the hotel's concierge. Interviewed in the lobby, Mr. Leduc promised great changes would come for the Clarington. All right. Yeah, but now is it is a doofus. It's not a good people's person, which you should be if you manage to tell. Well, just look at these distinguished gentlemen and a young Bernard. <laughs> so I guess Bernard is the one on the right. <laughs> Man, that's mean. She's actually, you know, at the begin in the first episode, I I could I admit I thought she was like a goody two shoes, you know, who was too good to be true. But I actually like her. She has a little bit of sp That's exactly what I wanted for her to have spunk. And she has it. I see the screwdriver. I see it. I see it. But first, what is this? Inspect. Opposing something that could help so many people just because it's close to your hotel? This is ridiculous. Sophie, this is the third time you said it like this. We know. I think this is for people... I think it's it gets repeated because people might not find all the documents. Dear Mr. Weston, I would like to thank you again for agreeing to this partnership between the Clarington Hotel and Weston's department store. Thanks to your generous help, renovations are well underway and hotels never look better. You should come visit soon when your busy schedule allows it, of course. And on another note, it has come to my attention that you have formed a group of local businessmen to oppose the construction of the new mental hospital. After working so hard to elevate the Clarington standards, I cannot allow a band of cuckoos to move in my backyard. Should you accept it, it would be an honor and privilege to join your fight. Cordially, your sincerely, Bernard Leduc. Handwritten by Eugene, enjoy the cold, you cold-hearted prick. <laughs> okay, throw away. Aha! Let's get you to that vent. Ah, oh, that's proper turning. The last game I played was Fort Solis and they had like turned the object and you just could wiggle it like it was here and then you could do this. And that was it. And it was super like it felt it felt heavy doing it. So this is ah gorgeous. No, I want to Oh, pick up. Oh, and wish 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 wish. Uh -huh. This does not look like a nice brotherly check-in. I had no idea things were this bad between Bernard and Raymond. I also did not have an idea because I haven't read the letter yet, Sophie. Thanks for the spoiler. Dear brother, I thank you for your invaluable input, but it need I remind you the terms of our agreement. I did my part. I got you out of jail and have ensured that news of your deviant ways would not leak. Oh, he was... Deviant. That always means queer, right? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> always in this game. Now I expect you to keep your side of the bargain and stay out of my way. You're not in charge of the hotel anymore. Oh, that's so sad. He didn't want to retire. I've worked relentlessly the last two years to return the Clarington to its former glory. A great challenge considering the poor state you left it in. Oh, so Raymond, it wasn't racism. It was just homophobia and just, I mean, yeah, no, it, it's, it's bad. 
I'm glad father never got to see how you so shamelessly destroyed his great legacy. As for me, I will be dead too before I listen to a single word of advice from you. You know, I actually think back then it probably was a... It would have been a good business investment to keep the hotel going for a few more years because I think then... If it's like, you know, on the grape wine known that this hotel is queer friendly, I think you get good business, you know. Uh, you ask I lower our prices, but I can tell you I plan on doing just the opposite. My guests will only be... La crème de la crème. Your de deviant friends can find themselves another place for their sinful debaucheries. Enjoy your retirement. Man, he does not know how many rich gay people there are, right? Okay, put back. Do I want to... No, I will not throw it away. I might get into trouble. I stick with my, you know, only throw away what's... Oh ho! Ew. Is this Linda's? Why do you say ew? I mean, yeah, I guess a used bra. If it's not your own. But it depends, you know. I mean, how 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 often does she switch bras? That's <laughs> okay. Check on room 602. Ask Eugene to fix the radiator. Call Weston's office. Apologize to Mr. and Mrs. Drake for Valentine's ball mishap. What happened there? Speak with contractor about cost overruns. Call Weston's office again. Decide winner for employee of the month reward. Okay. Uh, put back. Close. Oop. No, no, no. That's not what I... Ugh. I think that was it. We can look into these. Oh yeah, that is so weird that it's open, right? With this blizzard, Bernard's office will be a skating rink by the end of the day. Best to avoid that. On second thought, maybe some fresh air is exactly what Bernard needs right now. Exactly! <laughs> exactly! I'm like, you know what? That dick one deserves it. Ooh. No, it's not. I came by here not too long ago, and Andrew was already covering for you. That's because I was in the ladies' room. That's no excuse to- It's my time of the month. I- uh, You're married, aren't you? So, you know how it is. I have to go more often, and- Oh, sometimes I stain the furniture, and, and don't get me started on all the- That's enough details. I- Miss Bellivet, what were you doing in my office? I wasn't someone left the door ajar. Should we? I wasn't. I was. I was simply closing the door. Someone left it ajar. Huh. Must have been Eugene. Uh oh. Well, don't you have work to do? Yes, sir. Then get to it. Uh, Mr. Drake has asked to see you. Again? God, he just can't get enough of me, can he? Just indulge him. Apologize one more time for Friday's mishap. Do whatever needs to be done. We cannot afford to lose such loyal guests. Okay, fine. I mean, I did leave the window open. It was open before. I didn't open it. That was a close one. Yeah. I had a few cold sweats. But at least I found what I was looking for. Good. Well, if you need me, I'll be attending to the whims and worries of our entitled client... Guests. Don't be a stranger. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> All right. The Bernard Whisperer. You mentioned talk your way out of Bernard's questions without... I don't know. Yeah, I hope I didn't get Eugene into trouble. What? Okay. Um, yeah, let's... I'd like to speak to Mr. Weston. Is Bernard Le Duc from the Clarington? Yes, the hotel. All right. Time to see what secrets that vent is holding. I do not wish to leave a message. <sighs> oh. I think he, I, I was about to uh, come out again, so I didn't want to, you know, get caught. I don't know if that's possible. That's the thing, I don't know how this game changes depending on the decisions you make.
but I still want to make sure, you know, like, I assume it changes a lot, so I will make the best to make the best. It's open again. That is so creepy. It's probably not even, it probably is just accidentally open, like, oh, maybe by I guess default. I I'm free to disturb room 508 now. That's where Bernard and Linda were... Ew. Yeah, let's do it! Let's find some... I mean, they're both bad... Not bad people, kind of unlikable people. And needlessly so, you know, it's, I mean, they probably have their reasons, because everyone has. But it's still, uh, I don't know, sometimes I really wonder why some people make life so miserable for others without any, without any reason, really. It's okay if you have a vendetta, you know. Ugh. Damn, it's still unopened. I mean, if it's still unopened, we can just leave it here for the next guest. That'd be happy. Okay. I thought we would, would find something more. Uh, oh, we can throw them all away. Amazing. What's that? Oh, rose petals. Oh, maybe it wasn't a good idea that I did this because now they can't be found out that they have the affair, right? Hmm. Oh well, it is what it is. I'm still- I'm doing my job, you know, so. And technically I'm not allowed to know what happened, so. Oh, this is so nice. It's snowing in Berlin. In December, I cannot believe it. This hasn't happened in so many years. It's and I actually think it might be climate change because now that so much of the ice has m m melted, and I think that's what I heard that first it gets super hot, but then it gets cold in certain regions because the more polar ice melts, the more the sea cools down, and then you get all those winds and hurricanes and blizzards, and it gets colder in certain areas of the world. So, it's a horrible thing, but honestly, it's kind of nice to have, like, a proper winter again. Sorry. Wait, how do I do this? Press on a screw? Oh. Oh, ooh, that's very nice. Why can't I do it there? Huh. Oh, that's so... Oh, okay. Oh shit. I would go back to that room. I would go in my own room. If they find me. Okay. And... Do we have two somewhere? Yes, here. A. And then we have uh, the circle thingy, that's H. Um, and then four is I. It's L. M is... And N is... In my room. Meet tonight in my room. Michael will be 
sleeping. We need to discuss. Meet me tonight in my room. Michael will be sleeping. We need to discuss our plan. That doesn't sound like blackmail. Clarington Hotel reception desk, Beth speaking. It's me. Oh, hello, Bean. Anything new to report? I found another message written in secret code. What does it say? Meet me tonight in my room. Michael will be sleeping. We need to discuss our plan. Michael? Who's that? Another husband? I don't know. It's the first time I'm hearing of a Michael in this story. Hmm. Let me check the log. Another woman. I mean, this whole game is about deviance, you know, and homophobia. Back in the days. There's a Michael staying in room 507. But with who? Mrs. Beaumont's room? Oh my god! But she doesn't have a husband. She's here alone with... Oh, Michael must be her son. I got him some extra blankets the other day so he could build a fort. Hmm. Could Marcella... Yes? Uh, no, never mind. <laughs> so, what's next? I guess I should go have a look at 507, but it's not on my list. There's a do not disturb sign on the door. Well, I could call the room to make sure no one's there. Good idea. Oof. Hang on. But then I would not change anything. They will just snoop and not change anything because the do not disturb, that might give us get us in trouble. I hope I remember that. Oh my god. I'm bad with that, you know. Like, remembering the most obvious things. What is it? You've got the all clear, Bean. Head on over. Thanks, Beth. I'll call you back. It's such a cute nickname. Looks like I'm headed to room 507. And Beaumont. And Beaumont is one of two guests staying in room 507, the other being her son, Michael. She's a divorcee. I don't know how that information got out the first time, but since then, Linda's made sure we sh wouldn't forget it. Michael. <laughs> so Michael is Anne's son. I thought his name was Mitchell this entire time. <laughs> Probably because any time we've interacted, he's been either racing down the hallway mid-sentence or talking through a mouthful of sugar frosted pops. No wonder I didn't recognize the name at first. Sorry, that was a weird pronunciation. Sometimes that happens. I think Michael must be around eight or nine. He's a sweet little boy and he's grown a lot on a lot of the maids here since we've been seeing him for around a month now. I think a lot of us will be sad to see him go. His mom asked me for extra blankets once so that he could build a blanket for it. I'm glad he's been enjoying his stay at the Clarington. Staying at hotels when you're a kid must be such an adventure. Yeah. Raymond. <clears throat> Raymond LeDuc is Bernard's brother. Before Bernard ran the Clarington, the hotel was in Raymond's hands. From everything I've heard, Raymond's style of running hotel was a different from Bernard's as day to, is tonight. Apparently fun was actually permitted under Raymond. Beth told me about the time a family from Greece was staying at the Clarington and the stubborn matriarch of the family rejected everything from the restaurant's menu. Raymond came in and without knowing a lick of Greek, talked things over. Next thing they knew, the entire family was somehow in the kitchen, shoulder to shoulder with a cooking staff, cooking up a whole new menu under the matriarch's instruction. Raymond was in there too, sleeves rolled up, chopping cabbage and rolling meatballs. By the end of the night, everyone was eating domades and keftidis, singing songs from Greece and laughing together. It sounds like something from a different reality altogether. I don't know what domades are, but I think keftidis. So I think, so there's this Turkish dish called köfte, which is basically spicy beef um they, they're not sausages they look like sausages but it's really just minced meat and really deliciously uh spiced like ah oh, it's it's one of my favorite things and in germany you get them in a sandwich and that's amazing so i guess it's the same because uh, i think in this <coughs> area um there, there's always different versions of köfte it's like dumplings and pierogi you know where you have like a lot of countries having their own versions of it okay Anyways, <laughs> um, I thought my family was complex, but the Ledukes are on another level. Bernard alleged, allegedly kept Raymond out of jail and kept any words of his deviant ways from spreading, and for that he expects his brother to butt out of anything to do with managing the Clarington. Poor Raymond, it sounds like he was in a tough spot, and Bernard found a way to exploit that. I wish we could somehow change that, like, you know, mess Bernard up with the affair. That would be so cool. Okay, so now, oh yeah, first we get rid of the cups. 
Oh, also, uh... Do they have... Yes, all the towels in their place. I'm such a good maid, ain't I? I, wouldn't, I would probably not be good at the job because there's so much handiwork you have to do with that it needs to be neat and is very specific clean style and I'm not very good at that. Um, so I really respect it. It's like a great, it's a craft basically to be good at your job as a maid, you know, the way you clean and efficiently also. The way you make the beds and everything, it has to be really, you know, nearly ritualistic I think. Get to the bottom of this and find out what links these rooms together. All right. I will not clean anything. Just look at stuff. Mr. Cruz. Ha! Huh. Huh. Insurance age. Oops. Sorry. Maybe insurance fraud or something? Numbers, dates, times. What does it all mean? So they both drank chair. <laughs> Look, it's both. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh my god, that detail. It's killing me. And they have different lipsticks. That is amazing attention to detail. That they both look. It's different colors. That is fantastic. I'm absolutely in love with this. Like that they didn't use the same color because, you know, whatever. People will know what it means. That is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Oh, did they spend time together in the same nunnery, I guess? Look look how angry the nuns look. Especially the one on the right. May it's probably the blonde one and the black haired one next to her because they are the two that are a bit more prominent than the others. Pity Pots, Sugar Frosted Pops. Oh, so the yo-yo was from him. Oh, and that was closer to between the rooms. So maybe he waited outside or something. Hear them pop. New, for free yo-yo inside. See the back of the box to discover how you can get a unique chance to visit our factory in Calgary, Alberta. Um, okay. Oh, uh, he wants to win. Oh, that's so cute. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Oh, that is adorable. Look at this. Oh, Michael. Adults can be so confusing. I promise it's not you. Oh, Dad, I'm sorry, but Mom asked me not to tell you the name of our hotel. She allowed me to talk about our room, though. We have two little beds, a radio, and even a television. Mom let me build a fort, and the maid brought us extra little blankets. She's really nice. <laughs> The hotel is nice too, but I miss home. I wish mom and you could be happy and I wish everything could go back to the way it was before. But mom says it's impossible. She says she no longer loves you. Do you think she'll ever stop loving me too? Oh, Michael. Yeah, it's this, there's this, I can, I can talk. Like, so I'm a divorce kid, um, but my parents didn't immediately divorce. They had like, they had a lot of back and forth phases. And I can tell you as a kid, who that's not enjoyable. That is actually very stressful, you know. Um, so I, I'm all for divorce. It's one thing if you don't even try, you know. Um, but if you tried a certain time and don't stay together because of the kids, because kids are very astute. They, 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 they can feel it in the air, you know. It's not like they're so naive and they see the tension and it can get really grating if parents are stressed you know, and aggressive towards each other. As a kid, of course, you, you notice that, you know. So I think it's a good choice to say, you know, and especially it is so brave in this day and age because, man, it was the 50s. And as a divorcee, that was really hard. The fastest way on rails through the Midwest. So you were eager to set up a meeting, but didn't want anyone noticing. I hope you're well in spite of the circumstances. We've been on the train for two days now. It's a long ride made even longer by the fact I cannot wait to see you again. We're scheduled to arrive in Montreal on the eve of Valentine's Day. I booked room 509. It's a marital suite. 
When we arrive, please refrain from talking to me until we can figure out a safe way to see each other. That's maybe also why she wanted to change um, the, the rooms, because I think she was on a different level, or she wanted to be closer to the room. Say hello to Michael for me. Um, aww. Honestly, queer love stories, they, they get me a lot, because I always... Especially during these times when it was, you know, because it's a... I love happy stories for queer people. Because you always get the sad ones, you know, so I'm rooting for them. Oh, that's Michael's. Okay. Grandma for everyone. Alright. Oh, snacks and letters. Sounds like this is from your school days, but... The name of the sender is smudged. Uh, we know it's her. That's not... Dear Anne, you were right. I missed the snow already. It's so hot right now in Texas. It's quite a shock after the cool weather of Montreal. My family has never seen snow before, and I could not find the words to tell them how beautiful it is. They don't understand what they're missing. I wish I could build my brothers a snowman like the one we built together a few weeks ago. I know it's childish, but I had not had, had that much fun in years. Christmas was exhausting. Nine days of eating, singing, dancing. It's great fun, but I'm glad it's over so I can rest a little. Of course, celebrations will resume for New Year, but it gives me a few days to relax. How are things going with your family? I know you don't get along well, but I hope you are still able to have a good time. I will leave for Montreal on the 8th. I cannot wait to be back. I miss finding black cat hairs all over my clothes. I miss our late night studying sessions at Harry's. I even miss Sister Millie's cl Miller's classes, if you can believe it. I will see you soon. Warm wishes. Yeah, they were. They went to school together. They probably... Uh -huh. Keys are a Snoop's best friend. Oh, that's a beautiful key. I first want to know what this is for. Oh, maybe not. Some games really stand the test of time. I used to play this with mom all the time. Yeah. Oh, the big. Oh, okay. Oh, we need another one. Oh. Greta. It's for the cat? Aww. So a husband can abuse his wife and just get away with it? And people like Linda still think divorce is wrong? <gasps> Ugh. Did he kill the cat? Because that's very usual that like abusive partners also take it out on the on the pets. Um, especially cats because they're more feminine and everything, but also on dogs, etc. Attorneys of law. Dear Anne, I have met with Lewis and he has asked me to give you the enclosed letter. I think I should reiterate that some of your accusations, such as wife abuse, are not grounds for divorce in Quebec. I understand you are hurt, but I do not think antagonizing your husband is very wise at the moment. Do not forget to be in court at 11 a.m. on the 20th. Be on time. Also, a friendly reminder that my fees for January need to be paid before the end of this month. I'm happy to help you out, but I cannot work pro bono on this. Sincerely, Howard. Jesus. Adam or Eve, a confession of a shocking and forbidden love. Should Rose stay in a marriage that no longer makes her happy or seek refuge in the arms of the woman who truly understands her? She has tasted the forbidden fruit years ago and now she is all she can think of. But what will her family and society as a whole think of her if she turns to a life of sin? Should she be condemned for even entertaining the thought of leaving her husband or pitied for having to make such a heartbreaking decision? Bridget Boswell is the prolific author behind novels such as And They Were Roommates and The Lonely Girl. Adam or Eve is the seventh novel. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, that pulp novels also had a way to deal with topics that were kind of forbidden in the more intellectual, cultured, you know, areas. But in that way, sometimes were a lot more progressive. Wait, is there something? No. I thought there was, you know... Oh, that is so sad. That makes me so sad. Oh my god, that makes me so sad. That's just... I have two cats, so that's... Good lord. That look in your eyes. What does it mean? And who is this from? You don't need to know my name, but you've seen me. I've recognized that look in your eyes when you checked in. You and I don't need to make a fuss about the, out of this. You keep your wits about you, and I'll do the same. To all reception staff. 
glad you've seen me. I've recognized the look in your eyes when you checked in. You, do, you and I don't need to make a fuss out of this. You keep your wits about you and I'll do the same. That is weird. Because I don't know if that's a threat or like, you know, something that's more... Uh, we're in this together. Ah, that's so sweet. <clears throat> I didn't do much, but I'm glad it meant something to you. Dear Sophie, thank you so much for taking care of our room every day and bringing us extra sheets. Mike and I wanted to give you a little something before we left. Sincerely, A. Oh, that is adorable. And here I am, snooping. But for the best, for love. The winds and the leaves that day made a sound that sounded like... A sound that sounded like really in? The winds and the leaves that day made the tree whistle a soft melody that came to my ear. I remember every part of this day for it was the day we met. Jesus, this is bad. I was looking for my cat when I heard the sound of the leaves blowing in the wind, like a melody to my ear, on the summer day where I met you. What happened to the cat? Oh my god, what happened to the cat? Let's find out what this key unlocks. Yeah, but I need a second one. Every kid loved these. I once had in my hands, and I cannot for the life of me find it again. It was like a car that if you basically crashed it against the wall, the front turned around and then it was like dented you know like it was in a car crash and uh, a little bit morbid but it was so absolutely cool and i always wanted to have that but i i don't i can't i can't find it hmm Mr. Beaumont, Anne's husband for now. Their relationship is not in a good place, to put it lightly. It seems his wife fled with their son and is now trying to divorce him. Michael and his father are still in contact, judging by the letter Michael's been working on in his pillow fort. I suppose there's the tiniest bit of relief in knowing that he and his son have a good relationship, but Michael can't possibly have the full picture of his parents' relationship and all of its complexities. It's easy to put a parent on a pedestal without knowing the full extent of who they are. But it's very nice... Well, it's... I always wonder, I'm always back and forth. I think in, at a certain age for a kid, it's good if the parent doesn't tell them that the other has abused them. But I think at a certain age, you should be honest with them. Because that also could be construed as, you know, you lied to me. But it's difficult. Like, I wouldn't want to be in her shoes. And so it's me, you know, like armchair psychology bullshit. Like, I cannot possibly... That key looks so familiar. Oh. Why do I associate it with room 505? I do. Do I? Oh, another letter. He's all but outright threatening you. Oh, I hope you can stay as far away from him as possible. I just met with your damn lawyer. You got some balls to accuse me of all that, as if you were approachable yourself. Do you think I don't know where you spend your nights? But worst of all is that you won't let me see my son, you won't even tell me where he is. If you think you have a chance to get custody, you really don't know me well. I won't let you take Michael away from me. <sighs> What's wild is that so many um, divorcees, or rather victims of, of domestic abuse, have really difficulty if they have a kid. Because a lot of the courts are like, well, they still, you know, the kid still needs to the, needs to the, uh, the family and everything. And that is a way for the abuser to get into contact again with his victim and that's just so wrong on so many oh no 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 what did i do no i didn't want to clean i did not oh shit Looks like someone grew tired of looking at your face mr beaumont she's gorgeous what did i just clean oh shit The White Cat restaurant. Oh, that's cute. No, no clean. Oh, I'm so, I'm kind of angry at myself. That happens when you're talking. Oh, it's in front. It's directly in front. Okay. Oh. Oh. Oh, boy. Someone's been living it up. Oh, boy, yeah.
Did he really just scold us for talking? These Montreal cab drivers, I swear. I know. I thought he appreciated us trying to make conversation. Oh, they're riding while they're in the cab. <laughs> Thank God for a good old-fashioned pen and paper, at least. Yeah, it takes me back. At least Sister Gabrielle isn't here to confiscate them anymore. So, like I was saying, are you ready for your week-long bridal shower, Mrs. Huber? Stop it, Simone. I'm not Mrs. Until we walk down the ale aisle, and this week is for thinking about anything but that. That's right. We're making the most of this weekend before I lose you to the jaws of merry life. I would never, I won't be. Another Andrea. I promise. Lion, he's going to kick us out if you keep making me laugh. The Montreal Tourism Association. Another fan of the Gossiper. I never did finish that article from this morning. That feels like so long ago now. Raphael Cosmetics. A lipstick that lasts all the way down the red carpet. Worried about smudges? For free or not, Raphael boasts a kiss-proof formula, ensuring your enchanting allure lasts from dusk till dawn. We ensure your lips are always camera-ready. Snap breath taking photographs that immortalize your beauty and be just like the glamorous Hollywood starlets. Give your lips the Hollywood treatment. I love that they used to write like whole short stories. With this new shade, he'll wish he stayed. He'll never deny you a kiss with lips as red as this. Get ready to pucker up with Raphael's lipstick collection. In vivid hues of scarlet reds and blushing pinks, these magical lipsticks exude an aura of irresistible allure that will leave hearts throbbing. Raphael Cosmetics. D knew he had a date with death, the gossiper, a peek in the lives of the rich and famous. Exclusive interview, Gracie Jones' dirty little secrets exposed. See also, the untold story behind Frankie and Ava's divorce. All you need to know about the Presley scandal. Is this bankrupting Mike? I guess if you know about, like, uh, 50s starlets, you probably know what they're talking about. I don't, so it is what it is. All that's missing are the pillows. Oh my god! They stole that! That's hilarious! They're probably a nightmare for a uh, service, though, you know? It's more like as Not a. exactly a cherished gift. If you just left it behind like this. This is Valentine's Day, I'm on the hunt, and I'm not going home without a prize. Pfft. Dear my beloved Diane, much as I would have loved to spend this Valentine's Day with a woman who's about to become a Mrs. Hubert, I'll happily make do with the lifetime of Valentine's Days awaiting us. Enjoy your week in Montreal. I'll be eagerly awaiting your return and the start of our new life together. Love, Gregory. P.S. Don't let Simone rope you into anything crazy. Tell her I need my bride back in one piece. That's not at all romantic. I mean, if you go for that kind of stuff, but it's very possessive. Uh, I would be angry at that because honestly these look really... Oh. Okay. But I guess we have to do our job. Adjust. Do we also clean that away? Oh, What? That's decoration. Damn! <laughs> What's the story behind oh this? Oh my god. Is that chocolate? Is that bleach? Is that did they kill some <laughs> did they kill someone? Oh my god, okay. That is very suspect. Sorry for the mess. Oh honey. Thanks for more mess with this message. I love how wild you can go with this. It just makes me very happy. Oh look! They drew a woman on the man. I love how queer this game is. And it's quite... No, I want to keep that. Oh, it's so cute. I will keep that. I'm already a little bit miffed that I cleaned the other stuff, but this can stay. Okay. So this had nothing to do with anything, I just wanted to do it. Oh! 
There! She has it around her neck! But then it should be... Okay. Wait, can I... Can I look at the... Can I... Can I toggle it or something? No, I can't. She has it around her neck. Okay, so that's why she said she she relates it to this room. Okay. Hmm. Did I throw it away? But why would I? Only oh. Huh. There you are. With Marcella. God knows where she is. Clarington Hotel reception desk, Beth speaking. Hey, Beth. Bean, I've been meaning to speak with you. Oh, about what? Well, a little birdie told me Mr. Morgan and Mr. Cruz had an argument yesterday evening. Really? Who's your little birdie? Jacques. Apparently it got so heated he had to get involved. And listen to this. It sounds like we were on the right track, because he heard a particular word thrown around quite a lot. Wanna guess what it is? Kawabunga, what? Affair? Bingo. Hmm. Did Jack hear anything else? From what he told me, it seemed like Mr. Cruz was accusing Mr. Morgan of having an affair with his wife. Wouldn't have expected Mrs. Cruz to fall for a man like Morgan, but I guess the heart wants what the heart wants. Maybe, but that doesn't explain Mrs. Beaumont's involvement with Mrs. Cruz. What do you mean? I found a chest in room 507. I think it can only be opened by turning two keys at once. I found one of them in Mrs. Beaumont's things. Oh, and the other one? Well, I remembered seeing a similar key in one of Mr. Morgan's stocking pictures, so I went back to check. Mrs. Cruz wears it as a pendant. It looks identical to Mrs. Beaumont's key. Wait, so Mrs. Beaumont and Mrs. Cruz own identical keys that are both needed to open a mysterious chest? Yeah, there's definitely something going on here. Maybe they're just good friends. Gal pals, paling gals. The answer probably lies in that chest. I think they're having a, the, the affair. Let's go with it. I think Mrs. Cruz and Mrs. Beaumont might be the ones having the affair. That's an interesting theory. Did you find any clues that might support this? Nothing concrete. I mean... I did find a letter that suggests they may have gone to college together, but they could just as well be good friends, right? <laughs> yeah, that's one way to put it. I guess we'd know for sure if we could have a look at that chest, but I don't think I'll be able to open it. I've looked around room 509. I would have seen the second key if it was there. Mrs. Cruz must have left with it this morning. <laughs> yeah. We were so close. I can't believe it all ends here. Well, hold on. I may have an idea. Get me a candle and some plaster, and maybe I can do something about that pesky chest. How? I'll tell you later. Just find me those things, and I'll meet you in the basement as soon as I manage to leave my post. All right. Thank you for not hmm, giving up. Interesting. Come on, you know I wouldn't let you down. Maybe she's mirroring the key? Maybe that will work? Okay, but what I want to do first is... Wait. First. Close this. Close that. Close that. Uh, I don't know how plaster looks like. Or I do look know how candles look like though. Hmm. I guess. I guess we have to go. Wait, is that plaster? Great. This takes care ha. of half of this little scavenger hunt. As for the candles. Doesn't Rebecca keep some in her locker downstairs? Maybe. I like that I have like a full gigantic bag of plaster. It doesn't show. What's your secret, Sophie? <laughs> That's a good dress cut, you know. If you can hide like bulky bags. been he in here? No. 
Have you heard there's a famous movie director staying in 602? Jay, yes, I was there when he checked in. I don't know who he is, but he must be pretty important because Bernard was almost licking his boots. He even let the man bring his dogs in the hotel. Is he shooting a picture in Montreal? I've heard he's here on a scout, but I'm not sure what it means. Maybe he's making a picture on Boy Scouts. Do you think he'll shoot in the hotel? I hope he does, imagine. We could meet famous actors like James Dean. Let's hope the director has supernatural powers because Dean is very much dead. What? James Dean is dead? <laughs> Endless book club. Why, why not? Okay. Four more dinner, blah, blah, blah. Does your personal hygiene worry you? Are those worries bothering your husband? Stop worrying and save your marriage with lye soil. Lye soil is an indispensable aid to marriage hygiene. Millions of women use it regularly to safeguard their beauty and avoid undesirable surprises. It's penetrative and effective even in the presence of organic matter. What is this? Begin to use lye soil today so you can stop worrying about your hygiene and focus on more important things such as pleasing your hard-working husband. No, I want to know what is this for? Lysol has been endorsed for more than 60 years by scientists, medical professionals and many other men who have women's hygiene at heart. Do you put it down there and then it like probably burns off <laughs> everything? I don't feel it feels like it. I'm not the one who should be apologizing. You're such an idiot. I can't believe that I fell in love with you. Oops, sorry. Wait. What? I... I want my mother's ring back. <gasps> Jack, no! There. I don't want it anyway. Oh god, Jack. What's doofus? Fiery Dramatique. Oh, what's that? Whoever keeps stealing my lunch, I want my Tupperwares back. Susan. Yeah, let's keep that. What's that? It's probably best latest project. It's really cool how she has an eye for this kind of thing. Oh, Beth. Gotta hold oh, on to these tight. Master key, do not lose. I don't always get fashion, but these are fun to look at. When half the pages haven't been cut out. <laughs> oh, so she's doing this like probably uh, best latest project. It's really cool how she has an eye for this kind of thing. Collages. Oh, that is so Don't worry, cool. Gossiper. I'm coming back to you. I still haven't <laughs> learned all of Gracie Jones' secrets. Okay, so they played cards. I like this design of this room. It feels very uh I like that it's cramped and everything, you know, it feels very realistic. Bobby, you realize it's the person with the lowest score who wins, right? <laughs> to all employees, it has come to my attention that several guests have complained about a member of a staff going through their belongings in their absence. This has to stop now. Anyone with information regarding the situation should come to my office as soon as possible. I want the person behind this swiftly identified and reprimanded. Should no one come forward within a week, punitive measures will be taken against all of you. Bernard Leduc. I actually think it's Wendy because I'm not stealing stuff. Well, I take it, I give it back. But I think Wendy actually stole nail polish and that's probably how they noticed, right? Okay. Ah, there are the lockers. Is there anything here I need? I want? Have I been here before? Oh no. Ugh. What's that? Oh, is this a... a movie script? Change title, not catchy enough. In a northwesterly direction. Screenplay by E.L. Needs more murders at Killer Tornado. <laughs> Why cut the scene inside the nose? Best part of the script. See if James Stewart is available. Is it Hitchcock? That's the only... <laughs> Paper note with funny drawing. Red lipstick. 250 and loose change. Business card. Peppermint. Cigarette pack. Silver ring. One dollar bill. Green pen. Movie script. 20 cent and loose change. Cigarette pack, paper note with numbers, black pen, 135 and loose change. The red lip lipstick we found in Wendy's. That's probably what's been stolen. 
Is it a game? Candles, candles, candles. I think Rebecca keeps a stash of them, but where? Is it a game that they're playing? Oh! Stash uncovered. Reb, you won't mind if I just take out a candle. Yes. Now, what next? Okay, now I'm at it. Now I'm at it. It's done. I started. Maybe we'll find something. <clears throat> it is so cool how this game is designed. That you slowly uncover all these things. And honestly... Um, it's a lot about how you do it. That you draw the players into all the gossip and whatnot. And I, f I feel like this game does it really, really well. You know, that you get immersed with Linda and Bernard and Wendy and Jax. Because everyone has layers, you know. There's, er there's so much... Everyone has a, a very rich backstory. Um, with not that... Like, of course you find a lot, but it's not that much if you consider how many different people you're dealing with here. Mr. VIP is really getting to Bobby. Rebecca, I confess I'm about to commit murder. I don't care who he is, how rich he is, how famous he is. The VIP guest in 602 is a goddamn psycho. Could be Hitchcock. He was an asshole. He ordered room service this morning, but some of the plates got mixed up and he received eggs instead of pancakes. It happens, right? Where the man rushed to the kitchen in a frenzy and yelled at us for 10 minutes straight, saying eggs are disgusting and he hates them. I should have told him he's disgusting and I hate him. I thought of spitting in his next meal, but before leaving he swore he'd never order anything from a kitchen ever again. Without the shadow of a doubt, this is the worst establishment I've ever visited, he said in a pompous accent. <laughs> That's very much Hitchcock. <laughs> if he ever sends his clothes downstairs to be clean, can you be a good friend and stitch all of his pockets? Any other form of sabotage would do too. I know you're creative, just be careful not to arouse too much suspicion. Let's throw that away so he doesn't get into trouble. Oh. oh, there you are. I'm not sure I understand what the plan is here. Well, when I was little, we had padlocks on many of the farm's sheds. My dad would always lose the keys, so one day he made a mold of them using wax and plaster. I was thinking of doing the same. Are you sure it's going to Oh my god, work? look. Absolutely <laughs> not. But hey, I guess we won't know until we try. Yeah, you're right. So let's do this. Yeah, they assume, and it's okay. probably the right assumption, start, that the keys are identical. Pour the wax from the pot. Weep. Have you done this before? You're a real pro. <laughs> She's so now, nice. Time to put the key into the wax. Okay, I think you can remove it. Well, we're almost there. Just pour the cup of plaster into the mold. All right. Now we wait for it to dry. How long do you think it's going to take? I don't know. I guess we'll keep poking it every now and then. I bet you didn't think you'd be making a plaster key today, huh? <laughs> Indeed. But I like it. It's rare that this job allows me to use my creative side. Your creative side? Yeah. Well, granted, this key won't end up in any museum, but I enjoy the occasional artistic endeavor. Like collages? That one's yours, right? Yeah. I like to take fashion magazines and fix their lack of vision. Their lack of vision? I just think that fashion designers have been getting pretty lazy and bland lately. Don't get me wrong, my own creations are often a mess. But I like to think I'm good at editing. Putting things together to make them shine. I promise, yeah. underneath this terribly designed uniform, there is a girl with taste. <laughs> oh, I believe you. I prefer tabloids to fashion magazines. No, no, I've never seen you outside of work because that could lead to I something else. I believe you, but I've never actually seen you outside of work. Oh God, that's true. Well, we have to remedy that. Now that we're solving a mystery together, we may as well grab drinks too. What do you say? 
We should! I don't know if I have the time. Sophie totally has the time. She has no friends. That's super sad, but yeah, that's the truth. We should. I don't know why we never thought of it before. Well, it's this place, you know? When your shift's over, you just want to forget everything about it. Yeah, I know what you mean. But some things are worth remembering. Ooh. Hey, look. I think it's dry. I can't believe it worked. I could not have done this without you. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> well, I should get back upstairs before Bernard notices my absence. If he hasn't already. Let me know how it goes with the key. Oh, and uh, be careful while turning it, okay? You wouldn't want it to break inside the lock. Yeah, I'll be careful. Ooh. Thank you for everything. Ooh. No problem. Yeah. Look, all the posters. Someone drew all over the posters with a red pen. That is hilarious. Okay, let's clean this. Look. <laughs> this is so funny. It's your job to prank others. Oh my god, this is hilarious. And I also saw my favorite one was this one. <laughs> Look, that is so funny. I love it. Okay, what's this one? It's a clown. <laughs> I haven't noticed these before. Oh, that's Wendy and Jack. Wait. Oh, another one. Wendy and Jack have really gotten around. Yeah, but not anymore, I guess. Do we see any more posters? I just want a quick check. Oh, uh, no. It's wild that you, even if you've already visited so many... The window should be a top priority. And oh, I'd very much like to speak to him, trust me, but I just can't find him. He's nowhere to be found. Gone. Disappeared. Uh, I don't know what on earth is going on today. Is it because of that goddamn snowstorm? Or was there something in the coffee? Oh, I protected you, Jean. Well, the whole staff completely off. Shock, That's good. Everywhere. When do you ask me for a day off? Beth. Oh, don't so <gasps> forget to start it. Oh, what? What's her name? Sylvie? I never noticed how odd she is. Excuse me? I like her. She's a good girl. You know what? I should call the city. Tell them they don't need to build that new madhouse. Jesus. Oh, uh, no one changed that two one. Keys. Okay. Now, let's test them out. Oh, probably because it's so close to Bernard's. Okay, let's go. This was fun. Got stuck a little bit at the beginning because uh, of the... Yeah, the way... That's the only thing I think so far that um, I had to deliberately click on the image. But the arrow didn't change and I would have preferred that. That it tells me here's something. Because we looked at this... I looked at this. I probably edited it out. But I looked at this like four or five times. Oh, pfft. Okay, change of perspective, okay. <laughs> okay. Be careful, Sophie. You don't want this key to break. Oh, this is a beautiful box. I love it. Unlike my favorite bar, this one was black. Her alliterative name will surely take you back. These two sure love their riddles. In Atlanta, I noticed yours was pretty worn down, so I decided to buy you a new one. I hope you like it. And since you enjoy them so much, he's a little puzzled puzzle to figure out the combination two five letter words are the key both related to our history unlike my favorite bar this one was black the cat is a kitty it's the white kitty we found out uh, her alliterative name will surely take you back 
Was that the... From the first one, take the first two. Key. Okay, from the last one, take the last two. Okay. Hope you get better. Try to rest today. I will bring you hot soup after class. Huh. Marcella invited you to the movies. Let me guess. You said yes. The postman always rings twice as playing a lust theater tonight. It's based on a novel I read a while back. I'm sure you would love it, seeing as you like crime stories and murder so much. Nothing creepy about that. <laughs> I can barely listen to Sister Miller's lecture today. All I do is look at your lips and imagine kissing you. I can't wait for tonight. Sister Miller? No, that's not alliterative. I guess. Dear Anne, I have just heard Taurus Day on the radio and it made me think of you. I know how much you love Sentimental Journey. Counting every mile of road, railroad track that takes me back. Last time I was in Texas, it felt like coming home. Now strangely, I feel away from home. I wish you were here with me. I always feel at home in your arms. I can hardly believe it has been five weeks since we last saw each other. Sometimes I wonder if I might be going crazy. You're always in my head. Everything reminds me of you. Not only songs on the radio, but silly things like the flowers in your garden that smell of your shampoo. I and mean, when people say the word darling, and I can hear you say it with your lovely French accent. Darling. I can. My family seems to have noticed my odd behavior, but of course I cannot tell them about you. Even though I wish I could. I feel like climbing on the roof of the tallest building in Austin and shouting my feelings for you at the top of my lungs. God, I sound like a giddy teenager in love for the very first time. Maybe I am. Sometimes I'm scared that all this time with you was nothing but a dream. A dream too good to be true. I'm afraid that when I return to Montreal, I will realize you never existed. Or if you do exist, you don't remember me. I wish I had a picture of the two of us, so I would know for sure it was real. I long for your embrace and the taste of your sweet lips. I love you. Oh. I knew it! I knew it! Dear Anne, I'm sorry it took me so long to answer your letter, last letter. It has been six months already since I left Montreal. As you always say, le temps pas si vite. My parents are glad I'm done with my studies. They always thought it was a strange idea for me to go to university. Now they want me to find a husband and have children like any other woman. I think I will. These past few months I had a lot of time to reflect on our relationship. You know my feelings for you and I hope you never forget how much I love you. But we cannot hide our heads in the sand any longer. We were lucky our story lasted as long as it did and foolish to think it would last forever. Our love is forbidden and hiding it from fam my family is proving more and more difficult every day. You will always have a special place in my heart, but belie I believe it is time for us to go our separate ways. No! You made me feel like a teenager. You made everything but the present disappear. Now I need to be an adult and think about the future. Oh no! That is so sad. Put the letters back. Doris Day? Doris. Doris. So it's... W-H-I-S? Wiz? Greta! Oh, Greta! Oh, oh, it's so sad. No, I'm getting... I'm getting sad. Okay, I think I got it. So it's G... Yes. And R. No? Doris? I? S? Yes! Okay! Whoop whoop! All on my own. And it only took me six hours. No. No. It took me a while, but not too long. I guess. Medium. That novelist, Bridget Boswell, is actually you, Marcella? Oh! Dear Marcella, or should I say Brigitte? You know I prefer a good old crime story, but last week I came upon a romance novel with an intriguing title, and they were roommates. I bought it on an impulse at a train station and read it from cover to cover during the journey. Can you imagine my surprise when I recognized our story? You may have changed the names and locations, but all of our moments are there. Our endless discussions in the dorm room, our first date at the theater, our trip to Quebec City. Uh, you often said writers are thieves, but I never fully understood until now. It has been almost 10 years since I received your last letter. The letter that painted our relationship is nothing more than a summer fling. At first I could not believe you had written those words, then I waited in vain for your answer. And had to accept your love for me had never been real. Oh! No. Next page, D. Oh, I thought it was P. For many years I was broken hearted, angry, confused. I questioned the nature of your feelings of our attraction and made many wrong decisions. 
But this book, your book, am I foolish to think it's proof you really love me? In any case, I hope you are well and I'm happy to see you accomplish your dream of becoming a writer. Tran, c'est sur moi. A. Dear Marcella, I didn't. Oh, Anne, murder might be a bit much, but you deserve some kind of justice. I didn't expect you to reply to my letter, but I'm happy to see I was wrong. Your words have comforted me in a time of great distress. If only Lewis was half the man you say Hector is, he has quite a temper and hits me frequently. I'm willing to put up with it as long as he doesn't hurt Michael, but there are some days when it becomes almost unbearable. The other day I dreamt of our first date, we were watching The Postman Only Rings twice again, but suddenly we were in the movie, you were Lena Turner and I was John Garfield and we were both plotting to kill my husband. I hate to admit it, but I almost hope it was premon premonitory. To answer your question, I, still, I do still have our box. My brother is currently in Atlanta for work and I was thinking of going to see him with Michael next month. If you are able to meet me there, we could open the box. Together and laugh at the silly... <sighs> come on, come on. It's okay if an indie game, a very, you know, an itch indie game does it. But come on, that's a horrible way of, you know... Okay, well, breaking off the sentence. Okay, and laugh at the silly things we thought important all those years ago. I hope to hear from you soon. P.S. Do you remember that secret language we invented so Sister Miller couldn't understand the notes you passed during her class? In secret language, I still do. Dear Marcella, I do like a happy ending. I just hope that's where your story is headed. Thank you for sending me a signed version of your latest novel. I think it's your greatest work yet, but I do have a few comments to help make the next one even better. First, I believe Rose should be more concerned with what she deserves than what her husband deserves. He may not deserve the pain she will cause by leaving him, but they both deserve to be happy. And they won't be as long as they remain together, as long as she doesn't listen to her own needs. Also, I think it would be great if your next novel ended on a more positive note. Imagine if Rose left her husband and rode into the sunset with Eve. Imagine if they went to New York or Los Angeles, some place where people like us are tolerated. Imagine if they got to have their happy ending. It would be the best story ever. I hope you will consider it. Aww. <laughs> P.S. I know you say invisibility product protects us, but don't you just wish to be seen sometimes? Wouldn't you like people to know you are Bridget Boswell, to recognize you on the street, to recognize you for your work? Why not publish your next novel under your own name? Oh, so you came to Montreal under the pretense of celebrating your wedding anniversary. But all along, you meant to reunite with Anne. God, Sophie. Smart as a loose... rope. <laughs> I left the house, I left Lewis. I couldn't take it anymore, I couldn't lie anymore. How do you do it? How do you manage to live a double life, to hide your work and your novels from your husband? I had so much less to hide and yet... Michael and I stay at the Clarington Hotel until we find a place to stay and the divorce is done. I don't know how long it will take. Could you come and see me in Montreal? I really need you by my side right now. Trans a moi. A P.S. I wouldn't put it past Lewis to discover every hotel guest book in the region looking for me under his surname, so I've registered under the name Beaumont. Maybe uh, Morgan is hired by uh, Lewis. Or Louis? That... That dick! After all this, turns out you're a fan of Bridget? Of Marcella? That's a lot sweeter than I expected. There's a lot of stuff in here. I don't think I've looked at everything oh, yet. Oh, really? Dear Marcella, although you don't know me, I can safely say I'm your biggest fan. Your novels have literally changed my life. After the war, I spent almost 10 years in a psychiatric hospital because of panic attacks. None of the treatments were working and I wasn't getting any better. I became friends with one of the nurses who started lending me books so I could pass the time. I didn't really like the first ones, but then I picked up Bridget Boswell's first novel, your novel. That's Morgan! I'd never read such a beautiful love story. It almost brought tears to my eyes. I immediately urged the nurse to get me more of your books. Believe it or not, the more I read them, the less panic attacks I had. The doctors thought it was their new medication finally working, but I knew the truth. Well, it could be both. It could be both. Your novels gave me the courage to get in contact with Lindsay, a friend from the war. I had always felt for him the same way. Oh, no! Oh, my God! This is just overkill. And this is, like, it's December right now. You know, it's Christmas time. So, I'm, all, I'm one of those people. Look, I don't always need cheese, you know. But I think we're in dark enough times that cheesy happy endings are just ugh, the bee's knees. <clears throat> that your characters feel for each other, but I had never dared telling him. Now I have, thanks to you. The thought of seeing him again is what motivated me to get better and leave the hospital. I hope to hear back from him soon. After my discharge, I want to thank you for everything you've done for me. I've discovered Brigitte was a pseudonym, so tracking you down took longer than I thought. Fortunately, I'm very patient and resourceful man, and I never give up. Do you think we could meet? I have so much more to tell you, Paul. That's though... It is... The, his story is sweet, 
but then what he did is not sweet that's scary that is truly scary don't do this paul that's not no no dear marcella i'm glad you were able to open up to marcella like this everyone needs someone to talk to yeah but she was very kind that she reacted nicely because i would be freaked out like if i have a pseudonym it's for a reason you know don't stalk literally stalk me it's one thing if an old friend does this to find out that you you know to where you are and everything because they you know but it's a stranger okay thank you for answering my letter i realize now how unsettling it must have been for you yes please forgive me for tricking your editor into giving me your address i know i shouldn't have done that i wanted to thank you as well for your encouraging words concerning lindsay I still haven't heard from him and I'm starting to fear I might have the wrong address. I wish I could take a train to Virginia. Oh, it's also very smart they chose the name Lindsay, so people would think it's a it's a girl, but it's not. But that's not an option right now as I can barely pay the rent. I guess I will have to find a job. As a kid I dreamt of being an actor, a Hollywood star. I know it's a foolish dream, but what else can I do? What am I good at? I've tried getting some odd jobs already, but employers turn me down as soon as they learn where I spent the last 10 years of my life. If it continues like this, I'll probably end up on the street like so many of my army buddies. Why am I telling you all this? After reading your books and getting to know you through them, I tend to forget. I'm only a stranger to you. I hope you don't mind. You seem to be a good listener. And I've been feeling rather lonely ever since I left the hospital. Anyway, please tell me more about your life and do not hesitate to write long letters. I must have read your previous one a thousand times already, Paul. An advance on my salary. So Marcella hired you. But what for? Marcella hired her him i've just received a letter from lindsay's mother she tells me he's dead oh words cannot even begin to describe how empty i feel he died two years ago before i even sent my first letter he will never know my feelings for him and i will never know if he could have loved me back oh yeah yeah i remember i wasn't quite i did i didn't know i didn't remember whether he was dead or the mother just said please don't contact us i guess i should have known this would end in pain just like your novels I wish I had Lindsay's ability to find beauty everywhere. Even during the war, amidst the death and chaos, he would marvel at the forests of Germany, at the sun, the birds. He loved birds so much. He could identify them just by listening to their song. I have to admit, your proposition took me by surprise. I was hesitant to leave home at first. I was afraid to miss Lindsay's answer. But now there's nothing keeping me here. I'm desperate for anything that will help me forget the pain. But I don't have enough money to make it to Texas. Do you think you could give me an advance of my salary? In spite of everything, I'm really excited to know I'll finally meet you. Hmm. Is that it? Yeah. And that's the... Yes. Okay. So, let me get this straight. Mrs. Beaumont and Mrs. Cruz are some kind of star-crossed lovers? Seems like it, yeah. But I'm not sure whether they chose to meet here just to reconnect for a few days. Or if there's something more to it. Well, I may be able to help with that. Really? How? Oh, some mail arrived earlier for Mrs. Beaumont. Hmm. I wonder what's in it. We could open it. I mean, that's kind of illegal. Oh, is it? Yeah, I think Sophie. it is. Sophie, we crossed that line. Well, too late. I've always known I would end up in prison one day. <laughs> it's wrong so, though, kids, okay? Don't do this at home. Three train tickets. And, uh, oh, there's a tourism pamphlet for California. California? Well, it makes sense. It's much more progressive there than it is here. So, Anna and Marcella want to go there to live their love freely. Anna and Marcella, huh? You three are best pals now? <laughs> well... After reading so much of their correspondence, I kind of feel like I know them, you know? Yeah. But what about Mr. Morgan, though? I mean, Paul. How does he fit into all of this? I don't know. That's the weirdest thing, that she hired him. I don't know for what. I think Marcella hired him. I found some letters Paul wrote to her. He said that her proposition took him by surprise and that he'd need an advance on his salary. What did she hire him for? To investigate her own affair? I'm not sure. I didn't find the letter he was replying to. And why did he have those pictures of you anyway? I guess we'll never know for sure, but I don't think yeah, it was ever about that's me. It's my theory. It's always been about Anne and Marcella. Exactly. Well, it feels a tad anticlimactic, but... 
Who needs drama, right? <laughs> At least it made our day pretty interesting. <laughs> it sure did. You know, after today, I think I get why you're so interested in the lives our guests lead. I try to forget they exist as soon as I'm done interacting with them. But <gasps> once in a while, it's nice to remember that... Well, even the most put-together person could be an absolute mess on the other side of the door. What if Morgan did not get hired to spy, but to kill? Because, remember, at the beginning of the game, and I barely didn't, just now I did, we are at a police station, so... Shit. Maybe to kill either the abusive husband or the other one. And that would be mean because, I mean, he he's kind of a... Not one of the good mother mama boys. But still, he he, feel, he felt pretty... Well, let's see. Let's see what will happen. But first... What about you? Yeah. Who is Beth Lambert when no one's looking? I like to think that with me, what you see is what you get. But maybe an extra Snoopy super sleuth could uncover a few more layers. Maybe ones I didn't even know I had. Ooh. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> Come see me when your shift ends, all right? We could leave together if you want. Sure. If we're able to. With all that snow, I'm thinking maybe we'll have no choice but to spend the night here. Ooh, a sleepover. We could set up a pillow fort on the mezzanine. A pillow fort? We do work in a hotel, you know. There are actual beds here. I know, but isn't my way so much more fun? Well, we could take a page out of Michael's book and decorate it. And then spend the night throwing stuff at Bernard whenever he comes through the lobby. Oh, now you're talking. <laughs> All right. I just have to finish my tasks for the day, and then I can leave. That ringing. Sounds like the elevator doors are jammed. We'll do that next time, though. All right. I'm quite sure next episode will be the last episode, and it might be a short one. I'm sorry, but I already played uh, over one and a half hours, and um, yeah. So uh, I'm you. Th that's the thing. It, it's I, I, I described it as a murder mystery in the first episode because I thought it would be about a murder, and maybe it still is. But I actually like that it's more about the relationships and everything because personally. Um, I have this thing, I'm hu I love crime movies, you know, I love mystery movies uh, and murder mysteries especially, but only if it's more about the interpersonal relationships, so the Knives Out movies I really love and the old Aku Poirot movies, you know, and stuff like that because they're more about relationships between people, you know, and all the drama that leads to crime. Um, and everything that's about organized crime and drug stuff and criminals, you know, it's like and I mean criminals and, you know, like big head honchos, mob bosses, etc. is really not my thing. It's not my genre. So this is right up my alley because it's so much more about the personal relationships. And by this point, at this point, it's, you know, I, I don't even need to have a murder because I love this so much. It is quite different from the other games I usually play because this is a lot less horror. But I still think it's very tense. I do, like, I don't think the game is designed like it, but I always feel like, oh man, I have to be careful, otherwise they will catch me, you know? <laughs> so for me, it is a little bit tense because I, I never quite sure know what will be the right move and the wrong move um, and what consequences these will have. Um, yeah, and I do love, I hope we will get a happy, a happy ending. Honestly, seriously, because... It's December, it's that time of the year, you know, I want something nice <laughs> and then we can dive back into like horror stories again where everything's horrible, you know, everyone dies, gets killed. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to this and um, man, I can't tell you how much I love this game. Um, yes, with uh, clicking on the photo, I t it took me a while and I wish, you know, the cursor would have just changed shape so I knew that this was like clickable. Maybe it did and I just didn't notice. That's also a very 
a very high possibility. But other than that, I'm, I st I'm so much in love with this game. And I cannot find anything I dislike about it. Like, even the all to up to the small details of having, like, two different lipstick colors on the cups. And having the posters, you know, where someone just scribbled something funny over them. I mean, these are the small things that are just absolutely adorable. And they show how much love went into this game. So, I can't wait for the finale. And, uh... I hope you're with me. Yeah, what's th my question? Do you think there will be a murder? And who will it be? I mean, will it be Marcella's husband or Anne's husband? You know, no spoilers, of course. So if you know the ending, please don't spoil it. But if you have theories, you know, um, then please share. Also, if you have other theories about this game, because one of the greatest things, and I think it happened more so this year, um, in previous years, I, like I always have some very loyal. Uh, viewers who um, comment with really insightful gaming analysis and their own opinions about it you know and how they liked it and their theories and everything and I truly I, that I enjoy it so much like um, I appreciate comments that say I love your videos but honestly I live for the comments that go more into the games and the stories themselves and you know when you say I hate this character I don't like this or I love this character or this is my theory on the story. That's what I'm living for. So uh, thank you to everyone who does this. Because I feel like in the last couple of months, um, this has increased. I know there's always been a few that were just amazing like this from the get-go. You know who you are. <laughs> but um, it's really fun that there's now like more people that really happily engage um, with me on these games and the theories. Uh, because it's really, it's, it's a lot more fun to do it than to read um, your reactions to the characters and the stories and everything. So thank you and hopefully see you next time. Bye! This is my self-recorded outro song so I don't get hit with copyright claims. If you subscribe, you subscribe to a lot of fun tutorials, reviews and let's play!